You can't tell me you don't remember who that is. In case you don't remember him, that is Kai, the hatchet welding hitchhiker. That is what the media named him. Uh, that video went super viral uh, right in about uh, February of 2013. Now, uh, even though he basically told you what happened in the story, uh, I'm going to just elaborate the story a little bit uh, more quickly. Uh, this guy, Kai, was hitchhiking right off of the 99. I, I believe they might have been somewhere around the Fresno area. And he gets a ride from this guy named Jet Simon McBride. And he starts talking about how he's Jesus and that he had sexually assaulted a teenager. So Kai's getting uncomfortable. So they head into town and he gives Kai 40 bucks. He said, go try to find some marijuana. He jumps out of the car. And as soon as that happens, that guy Jet just uh, slams into the back of a utility worker, pinning him against his truck. He broke both of his legs and this guy's like screaming in agony this woman comes to try to like help him this guy jet the crazy guy gets out and starts beating him up and then of course like he said in the interview kai just comes with the back end of the hatchet because if it was the sharp end he would have killed him and just cracks him over the head a few times now after that interview kai gives the reporter his email address and let me tell you the uh, offers of work and and start coming in uh women want to know who he is uh tv producers are trying to get a hold of him they're talking about uh, you're going to be the next biggest uh, reality tv star and he shunned all of those offers but jimmy kimmel got a hold of him and he goes on his show about three months later after he saved that woman's life a really quick backstory on this guy Kai. Originally, he's from Alberta, Canada, and if you delve a little bit into his background, uh, there is uh, quite a bit of mental illness there, as you can kind of tell by watching him in the interview. Uh, he claims he was hitchhiking across Canada and he was sexually assaulted by somebody. Uh, the guy that was arrested for that crime against Kai, uh, by the way, I believe his real name is Caleb McGulvery something like that McGulvery the guy got arrested but he never got convicted and if you ask Kai's friends like hey how how is Kai as a person uh, they would describe him as a, one of a few things uh, they didn't say he's he is intelligent he's an intelligent guy he is quirky he is creative and however this guy will flip the script really quickly he'll be nice one minute and then he'll just be Mr. Hyde the next so he's very unpredictable you don't ever know what he's going to do next and he lives his life traveling around the United States sleeping under you know freeway overpasses sleeping in train stations riding freight trains across the country so he goes on Jimmy Kimmel gets a, a, a massive amount of, of people just wanting to get to know him wanting to you know meet up with him, uh, buy him dinner, other things perhaps, you know. And so three months after he left Jimmy Kimmel, he gets out to New York City. And when he's in New York City, he's in Times Square. And the story here is a little murky because who knows what's really going on. So he's in Times Square and he meets up with a man named Joseph Galfi. He's a 73 year old attorney out of New Jersey. So supposedly James asked him, hey, you look lost. Uh, do you need a place to stay? Blah, blah, blah. They go off. They have a couple beers. They're talking. They eventually end up at James' place, which is right down the street right here. So he goes to sleep. He wakes up. He leaves. He goes to meet a girl, I believe, in Long Island. Maybe she came to pick him up. They hung out. He came back the, the same night. And the next night, he wakes up. And according to Kai, this guy, 73-year-old James Galfi, is on top of him, sexually assaulting him. And he says, what the hell? So he pushes him off him, hits him a couple times, and then grabs his stuff and then heads out of the house. Immediately, 
He finds a way down to Philadelphia. I believe he was with a, a female fan of his. So they, she might have drove him down to Philadelphia. Now, when he left, uh, little did Kai at the time know is that he didn't just hit James a couple times in the face and said, how dare you sexually assault me? No, uh, this guy uh, brutally murdered him. Uh, this was not a, a self-defense uh, killing, in my own opinion. Uh, when the homicide detectives arrived to the house because uh, her, uh, James, a uh, paralegal, hadn't seen him come into work, and the neighbors had seen his newspapers piling up in front of his doorstep, and that was not like him. Uh, this was a career military man, and he was very punctual and sharp when it, came, when it comes to like things like that, getting his mail, getting his newspaper. He was a creature of habit. So when the police arrive, they find him dead in his room. And when they conduct the autopsy, come to find out that he has several facial fractures. He has a fractured neck and his right ear was almost ripped out from his head. So the police grab the records of James's phone and then they see the text messages between him and Kai and they quickly look up the phone number and they see this guy they see oh that's kai the hatchet welding hitchhiker so i'm imagining they put out like some kind of uh warrant for uh, his arrest or something like that eventually somebody recognized him at i believe a starbucks down in philadelphia and the police quickly apprehended him and he was even though he had made an, made an attempt to cover up his uh his looks to try to disguise himself uh there was no disguising that uh, really weird tattoo he got on his face. I mean, you can easily look at this guy and just watch him talk and just easily see that he, there is uh, some uh, severe mental illness going on right there. So eventually he's arrested. He's charged with the first degree murder of James Galfi and he spends the next five years sitting in County Jail awaiting uh, his murder trial. 2019 comes, the murder trial takes place and this guy is so mentally disturbed. First of all, I think there was a court appointed psychologist and they uh, said that he was diagnosed as uh, bipolar disorder, uh, PTSD, uh, antisocial behavior. Uh, he, uh, interviewing him about his past childhood, he would kill hamsters. I mean, this guy was mentally ill. This guy had big time problems. All that fame, all that stardom he possibly could have had and uh you know he was so mentally ill this guy he, he doesn't know what to do yeah he, he's not on any kind of medication and he's going around killing people uh his uh, court appointed attorney was not really able to defend him because during the court proceedings he would constantly come out with these outbursts he would disrupt the courtroom they, they a lot of the times they had to like uh, have a recess in the court because this guy couldn't shut up and then he would go off like start shouting saying like you're fired i'm gonna defend myself even if this guy were trying to like get a reduced sentence it was he was unable to just because of his mental illness now i'm not blaming his mental illness for him killing that man but this guy was just absolutely crazy and eventually he was found guilty of the first degree murder and he was uh, sentenced to uh, 57 years in prison. Uh, I believe he's eligible for parole in 2061. Now, by the time he's able to make his parole, if he does get out, he'll still be younger than James was when he murdered him. Just a, an absolutely fascinating story. And uh, you see this house right here in front of you. I do believe this is the house where the murder occurred. It looks like it possibly has already been sold and uh, it has new owners. But uh, this is like on a cul-de-sac side street, a very, very nice neighborhood. And uh, it's uh, just a weirdly uh, sad, but yet a uh, fascinating story that this guy could have really, really just cleaned up. This guy could have 
I know YouTube wasn't really a thing then. I don't think people really knew that people were making a living off of YouTube. However, this guy could have made a YouTube channel. He could have had 5 million subscribers. He could have had, I mean, this guy could have, he, he could have been a self-made millionaire just off of that, just off of being Kai the hatchet welding hitchhiker. But he's so crazy that nothing, nothing could be done for him. And uh, he's done a couple interviews from prison saying that he's, uh, you know, that he, he defended himself. He's like, hey, uh, this guy, he, he raped me. And he even posted on his Facebook when he, after he killed James, he posted on his Facebook, hey, what would you do if you woke up and some guy was on top of you and, and you know, some other stuff I really can't kind of repeat word for word. Uh, but yeah, and then he started posting like rambling things on his Facebook about uh, him as a child and uh, the, the ab uh, sexual abuse that he uh, suffered and, uh, and so forth and so on. Yeah, this guy uh, definitely uh, mentally ill beyond anything. And uh, yeah, just, uh, just a weirdly fascinating, interesting, sad story. And our final stop is the Gate of Heaven Cemetery here in East Hanover, New Jersey. And I'm going to visit the grave of Mr. James Galfi, and he is right over here. He's buried alongside of his mother and father. A uh, big, big, big shout out to my friend, my bestie Scarlett, for helping me find this grave. If I had not had her helping me with getting maps of this place, I would not have been able to find it. Uh, and you probably can't tell, but this place is absolutely huge. I believe there's 80,000 graves here and they were closed. Uh, but uh, hopping over a fence uh, never hurt anybody now, did it? But yeah, this is the man that Kai, the hatchet welding hitchhiker, murdered. So uh, rest in peace to uh, Mr. Uh, Joseph Galfi, along with his parents, uh, Joseph Sr. and Beatrice. Okay. All right, guys. I'm out of here. On to the next adventure. I'll catch up with y'all later. Peace out.